Yin and Yang, Fire and Water, Carnivore and Herbivore. The T-Rex and the Trike are two of the most famous, successful and heavily armed dinosaurs of all time. They were also syntopic, both living on the island of Laramidia, a vast landmass that would form the west coast of North America when the seas retreated, in the late Cretaceous. It's as if the dinosaurs were aware their days were numbered and had decided to go out with a bang. T-Rex and Triceratops were the dominant species of their age and are very common in the fossil record. Both also seem to have been particularly solitary for their family groups. Mass mortality sites provide evidence of other Ceratopsians like Centrosaurus living in large herds, but Triceratops were mostly solo operators once they passed the juvenile stage. Likewise, we have signs of other Tyrannosaurids like Teratophonius hunting in packs, but little evidence for T-Rex itself. With all that in mind, it's the perfect situation for a 1v1, and dinosaur media certainly seems to think so. These two animals have been duking it out on screen ever since The Lost World showed their immortal grudge match in 1925. These dramatized encounters tend to follow a familiar pattern. The two massive beasts slowly approach one another. A tense standoff follows with feints, intimidation, testing for weakness. Then one or the other gets in a lucky strike and it's all over. Weirdly, the battle has never happened in the Jurassic Park films, which seem to prefer carnivore on carnivore fights. Online, you'll see constant armchair debate about who would win in this clash of the titans. Some favor the larger predator with its bone crushing bite, others the heavier herbivore. But the topic has been thoroughly covered. So instead of trying to crown a definite champion, I thought it would be more interesting to ask whether these clashes actually took place. What evidence do we have for actual confrontations between these two juggernauts? First up, Triceratops' weapons need more consideration because most of the horniest animals of today evolved their head ornamentation not as a defensive measure against predators, but for intraspecies competition and display. And for dinosaurs, it's no different. Scientists have worked out how Triceratops' horns would interlock if they fought like deer or buffalo, and found that their skulls show damage in the exact places you'd expect from this kind of sparring. Although, if this was the only use for them, it would have to mean both males and females fought their rivals for territory, the way dick dicks do today, since ceratopsian horns are not a sexually dimorphic trait, both genders have them. Whatever their primary purpose, most horns can still be used to gore would-be predators. Buffaloes are even known to attack lion unprovoked, starting fights with a preemptive strike. If a murderous monster is coming right at you, you can't run away, and you have two meter long spears mounted on your forehead, it would be pretty weird if you didn't try and do some stabbing. From the T-Rex perspective, there's good eating on an 11 ton Triceratops, but most carnivores will avoid a pitch battle as much as possible, targeting young, sick, old or injured individuals that are easier to catch and pose a much lower risk. For a predator, an injury that reduces the ability to hunt can be a death sentence. So if this was a relatively even matchup, as many seem to assume, you would expect a Tyrannosaurus to try and avoid it. Still, it's easy to think of a situation where a T-Rex might end up tussling with an adult trike, whether through desperation or simply poor judgment. Many scientists imagine T-Rex as an ambush predator, so you can imagine a scene where the element of surprise is lost at a crucial moment and a hunt suddenly becomes a fight. We don't just have to speculate though. Let's open up the evidence locker and take a look at some battle damaged bones. In the Hell Creek Formation, paleontologist Denver Fowler identified as many as 18 different Triceratops specimens with Tyrannosaurus tooth marks. These wounds show no signs of healing, and seemed to have been inflicted by the theropods devouring dead Triceratops. In fact, there was enough evidence here that a consistent, gory feeding strategy has been suggested. Decapitation. The slain Triceratops often had bite and pull marks on their frills, but because these would have been bony keratinous areas, with nothing much to sink your teeth into, the T-Rex were likely biting onto them to move the corpses around. They're thought to have had a puncture and pull feeding method like a Komodo dragon, ripping away flesh with powerful head motions. The T-Rex would have grabbed the frill with their thickened teeth, which could withstand a lot of lateral force, and pull it to wrench the Triceratops' head forwards and expose the juicy neck meat underneath. And bite marks made on the neck joint and base of the Triceratops' skulls from behind suggest the predator actually used the frills as a handle to rip their heads clean off. So that sounds pretty messy, and as more specimens are identified with bite marks, it's sounding like Triceratops was more hapless victim than respected nemesis. But I have to wonder, 
Was it fully grown specimens in this study or smaller targets? And annoyingly, the answer is I don't know. No paper has been published on this research yet, so we can't check the details. I did notice though that the few specific examples described by Fowler are of subadult or juvenile triceratops, but bite marks have also been found on adult skeletons, like this example written about in 1996, where a T-Rex chewed right through a triceratops pelvis. It seems fully grown T-Rex could feed on both adult and young triceratops, but there's no good data on which was more common. One adult triceratops with signs of predation is particularly interesting because of what happened next. This specimen, also described in the late 1990s, is missing its left horn, and what remains features telltale Tyrannosaurus bite marks. But the bone also shows signs of healing, which means the Triceratops must have survived the encounter, after its horn was bitten clean off. Though the animal obviously didn't come away unscathed, it was clearly able to force its attacker to give up, and remained uneaten. It may even have left the encounter in better condition than the T-Rex, though given how rare fossilization is, we're not going to be able to see the other guy to compare. This specimen does seem to suggest a head-to-head -head encounter, quite literally, and probably inspired the depictions we so often see on our screens. It also shows that a large enough triceratops was capable of fending off Tyrannosaurus attacks. And you wouldn't expect them to be completely useless in combat if these animals didn't rely on groups for protection and were built for stability not speed, with this semi-sprawling stance like a lizard, then how else were they surviving? It's hard to think these immense plant eaters could have been so prolific if they were easy cannon fodder for the main predator of the time. Adaptations such as an incredibly flexible neck, which had a ball and socket joint like our shoulders do, may have helped them turn quickly and face oncoming rexes from any angle, keeping their vulnerable neck shielded. As well as the famous missing horn example, there are T-Rex fossils with damage that some people think could have come from ceratopsians, but this is much harder to prove than the tooth marks. And as far as I can tell, no one's made a serious scientific attempt yet. An even cooler specimen has only just made its way to a North Carolina museum in 2024, after languishing in private collections for decades and following a prolonged legal battle over the ownership rights. The dueling dinosaurs fossil features two dinosaurs, one herbivore, one much smaller carnivore, which were buried alongside each other, perhaps, dare we dream, locked in battle. A tooth apparently embedded in the plant eater hints at the possibility. While they were originally described as two different species, a newly discovered Chasmosaurine and a Nanotyrannus, they've now been identified as a Triceratops and young Tyrannosaurus. In fact, Nanotyrannus may not even have existed. These are awesome fossils. It's the first complete Tyrannosaurus skeleton ever, and both animals even have skin impressions. And the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences has turned it into an equally awesome exhibit, where visitors can see into the lab, watch the fossils being examined, and actually talk to the scientists at work. It's also all being live streamed and updates are being shared online. It's just really cool. The museum presents three hypotheses. Either the dinosaurs died dueling, as the nickname suggests, or the T-Rex was killed while scavenging a carcass, or the animals died separately and were swept together by a natural disaster. Sadly, as metal as it is to picture two dinosaurs bringing each other down simultaneously in a Reservoir Dogs style showdown, Options two and three seem way more likely. It's hard to believe that a juvenile, which has a much weaker bite force than an adult T-Rex, could have hunted a significantly larger Triceratops, or that such an incredible coincidence would be captured right in the moment by fossilization. It's going to take years for the paleontological team to solve this mystery, however, so for now we'll have to mark this one down as inconclusive. But even with this example discounted, there's enough evidence to say yes, T-Rex and Triceratops did actually fight. Tyrannosaurus were definitely hunting Triceratops, a large adult Triceratops was definitely capable of protecting itself, and we have convincing proof that that happened at least once. I do think the reality was often a lot quicker and more chaotic than what we're usually shown, however. I'm not going to share which dinosaur I think would have stood a better chance on average. I'll leave you to battle it out in the comments. And of course, neither stood a chance against the true apex predator of the late Cretaceous period, Big Rock. Perhaps as the meteor came crashing down to cause the KT extinction, a T-Rex and a Triceratops were in the middle of a standoff. Now that would be cinematic.